Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Let's Look at Histology Guide. Um, I'm your professor Christina Howard and let's get started on the histology of blood. So I've started on this particular slide, quote unquote, on Histology Guide, and this one isn't really a slide, right? It's just pretty much a diagram. So this is showing you the characteristics of the different formed elements of blood. So these are the parts of blood that are cells and not plasma. So red blood cells are obviously the most abundant. And they look like little toruses. So toroid means almost a donut. So they're pinched in the middle, they're hollow, they don't have a nucleus. Platelets are these little guys. Um, they're fragments of a larger cell called a megakaryocyte. So you don't see megakaryocytes in the blood, you only see them in the bone marrow. So neutrophils are the most common kind of white blood cell or leukocyte. So leukocytes is the group of cells that includes all these. And then within the leukocytes, um, let's erase this top guy. These guys are the A granulocytes, and these guys are the granulocytes. So granulocytes just refers to the fact that they have these cytoplasmic granules in them that are often quite visible. So neutrophils are the most common. They are light pink in the cytoplasm. They have light pink granules, and they have this multi-lobed nucleus. So this one has one, two, three, four. They may have other amounts. So this column is just giving you some examples of different shapes that neutrophils can take. Eosinophils have very obvious, nice, rosy granules and a bilobed nucleus. You can see one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So those are all eosinophils. Basophils are the rarest. They have dark, blackish purple cytoplasmic granules. And sometimes the granules are so densely packed that it's hard to see the um, nucleus, but they do have a nucleus with some lobes, like there. Of the agranulocytes, we have monocytes, and these are just baby macrophages. And then lymphocytes, which are kind of the fighter guy of your immune system, they perform most immune function. They're also pretty small, and they have this large nucleus that takes up most of the cell, such that you only see this little crescent of cytoplasm, if at all. In some cases, you don't see much in the way of cytoplasm whatsoever. All right, so that's a primer for um, what you can find in the blood. So let's actually go look at a blood slide now. So I'm going to take that away. So as you can see, when you look at blood with a low magnification, most of what you see is red blood cells. So it's a lot, a lot of erythrocytes, and then you can see those purple guys. Um, and those little purple guys are going to be your leukocytes. So uh, start at a low magnification and scan around and see what there is to see and see if you can pick up or detect any differences. So this is a skill that you'll develop. So if you don't have this skill right away, don't, don't stress out. But so for example, I am detecting extra redness about this one, which makes me think it's an eosinophil. Same with that one. And where was the other one I thought might be one? Maybe this guy. So you can even see at relatively low magnification which cells might be which ones. So I'm actually going to start with this eosinophil or this thing that I think is an eosinophil. Let's go find out if I'm right, shall we? Yeah, I am. Yeah. 
one of the nice things about virtual histology is you can zoom really far in and with pretty good clarity, and that's not something that's always possible with uh, in-person microscopy. So here is a eosinophil. It's got rosy granules and a bilobed nucleus, as you can see. So here's our eosinophil. Let's label it. And of course, these guys are erythrocytes. And then we've got platelets. So that's what you can see in this field of view. So let's go look elsewhere, shall we? Thought I saw something up here. Ah, look, a basophil right there. Okay, and this is a nice opportunity. So I have a basophil, and then up here I have a lymphocyte. So students often confuse these for each other. Thing to remember, basophils are the least abundant cell. So the order of operations for relative abundance of leukocytes, oops, I want to make myself a little place to draw. There we go. Um, is easily summarized by the following mnemonic, and that is never let monkeys eat bananas. So neutrophils are the most abundant, lymphocytes are the second most, monocytes are the third most, eosinophils are the fourth most, and basophils are the rarest. So when you look for basophils, you're going to be looking for something that is dark purple. This lymphocyte fits the bill, but it's too small and it's not granular enough. This guy is your basophil. So I like having them right here in the same field of view because you can see how much larger and chunkier looking the basophil is than the, neutrophil, the, the lymphocyte. Excuse me. So this is basophil, and this is lymphocyte. So just keep never let monkeys eat bananas in your brain and you ought to be good to go on relative abundance. So if basophils are less than 1% of white blood cells and white blood cells are less than 1% of whole blood, that should give you a perspective on how uh, numerous they are, which is to say not. All right, I got another eosinophil over here. Oh, there's a lot going on in this corner. So, lymphocyte, neutrophil, pink granules, multilobe nucleus, lymphocyte, eosinophil, another eosinophil. This is probably a large and also smushed lymphocyte. So this is not an example of one I would probably use for a quiz. It's probably one that I would leave off because its morphology doesn't match what I'm teaching you very well because it's damaged and that's going to happen sometimes. All right, so we found everything but a monocyte. So to save ourselves some time, I'm going to go hunt around here. You'll notice if you pay close attention while I'm scanning through here, most of the cells here are unsurprisingly neutrophils. Okay, so I found a monocyte, and in fact, I found two right near each other. So these two are monocytes. And you can also estimate them by how large they are. So not only do they not have granules, but they have this really large size. You could probably fit three or four erythrocytes in there. And that's a pretty good indicator that you're looking at a monocyte. These are neutrophils. And then this is a damaged cell. Uh, that's a question mark. It might be a damaged monocyte. We can't be sure. And that is all of the cells we've covered. Oh, here's a basophil. Basophil. 
neutrophil, neutrophil, eosinophil, neutrophil, 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 um, lymphocyte, weird neutrophil, neutrophil. So once you are practiced enough, you'll be able to do what I just did and identify all of the types of blood cells um, with as much ease as me. But it's just a matter of practice. You got to spend the time with the slides. Okie dokie. So let's move on. Oopsie. To vessels. If you want to see a megakaryocyte, let's click this really quick. This is just for fun. Um, I am not going to show you. There we go. I'm not going to test you on this, but I do want to show you megakaryocytes, which are the um, cells that platelets come from. So to do that, we're going to navigate over here. So there's one. And here's another one. Where's my virtual pointer? There we go. So this guy, and then let's go to the other one. Here's another one. So what these guys are going to do is stick a little foot out into the sinusoidal capillaries of bone marrow, and then pieces of their little foot break off, and that's how the platelets are formed. Pretty neat, huh? Okay. So now we're going to go down to circulatory system. And I'm going to skip heart and stuff for now and just look at some vessels. So right off the bat, I can tell which is which. The artery is going to have a thicker wall and a rounder lumen. And the vein is going to have a thinner set of walls and a collapsed lumen. So the vein is on the left, the artery is on the right. So I'm going to start by zooming in on the artery. Whoa, there we go. I didn't want to go quite that far in. So one thing that you'll notice right away is that the innermost layer is squiggly. And you can see that, and let me make my dot smaller, there's a color change between this side and this side. So if I draw a dotted line along it, you can see this innermost layer. So this layer is called the tunica intima slash tunica interna. And this is squamous endothelium and a little bit of elastic tissue as well. So um, let's write that down. So squamous endothelium and an internal elastic lamina. This layer here is the tunica media. And the tunica media is consisting of smooth muscle and elastic fibers. So those are both important layers. So um, the tunica intima is relatively thin, but in arteries, the tunica media is quite thick and robust. And that's one of the reasons why arteries uh, tend to have rounder shapes. Ooh. Excuse me. And that's because they have a thick wall to maintain their shape. Okay, so here you can see a very obvious transition from smooth muscle and elastic fibers to dense irregular connective tissue. So this layer is the tunica externa, 
and that's made of dense irregular connective tissue. So let's write that down. And let's put and then tunica intima. which is endothelium and elastic tissue. So those are the layers of an artery. So let's zoom out a little bit and compare that with the vein. And I'm not gonna zoom too far out because this of course is, um, I wanna be able to compare and contrast. So if you look at the artery on the right hand side and the, um, vein on the left hand side, you'll see that the relative thickness of the layers is different. So uh, veins don't have that much tunica media and they have more tunica externa, which here they're calling the tunica adventitia. Those two terms are interchangeable. Um, you can use either, so I don't care what you use. So let's zoom in on our vein. And look at those same layers. So again, here we have the, come on, there. So squamous endothelium, not much underneath. And then we have a very short tunica media. Also note, this has smooth muscle fibers, excuse me, smooth muscle fibers, bleh, suddenly can't talk and not anything else. So this is smooth muscle only, no elastic fibers. So that's this. And then the tunica adventitia, also called the tuna extern tunica externa, is this guy, dense irregular connective tissue. So same layers as the artery, different constituents of the layers and different thicknesses. That's the key. Okay, and the final thing I'll show you before I sign off for this is the Vasa Vasorum. So this, I just clicked it because I wanted to save time and navigate us over here. Um, so Vasa Vasorum are blood vessels that supply the outer layer uh, and middle layers of the vessels themselves. So large vessels need their own blood supply and that comes in the form of the Vasa Vasorum. So there's one, it's just a little blood vessel that supplies all the cells around it. So when you're looking for Vasa Vasorum, you're gonna to wanna to look in the tunica adventitia. Let's see if we can find another one without the help of histology guide. Yeah. That was pretty easy, right here. So you're looking for small blood vessels embedded in the dense irregular connective tissue of a larger vessel. All right, y'all, that's all I have to show you for the histology of the uh, circulatory system, so vascular connective tissue and the blood vessels themselves. Happy studying, and I will see you in the next video.